So let's assume that caste consciousness was higher 25 years ago, must have been higher than that 50 years ago, must have been higher than that 150 years ago, must have been higher than that 200 years ago. Okay? So my point is, if according to you, the society was divided on caste lines, and I don't mean you, I'm saying in general, if it was divided on caste lines, who do you think was fighting the Mughals? Who do you think was fighting the, the Deccan Sultanates? Did people refuse to participate in these wars saying, you're the Brahmin, I will not fight for you. You're the Aryan, I will not fight for you. When did these questions start? These questions started only after the entry of the missionary along with the European colonizer. Until then, these questions were never there. They never existed. Rana Pratap is fighting Akbar. And there's a very popular documented episode of him taking support from the Bheels and the Gonds. They didn't say, we are Adivasi, you are Aryan invader, no support. No. Rana Pratap had no problem sharing a meal with the Bheels and the Gonds. He was a Kshatriya. These are Panchamas. Where is the problem here? Who has invented these fault lines? I will be delivering a lecture in the den of this fabrication, JNU, on the 20th of December, the title being Invented Fault Lines of Bharatiya History. So I'm getting ready with all the ammunition for that. So the point is, sir, Ahilya Bhai Holkar feels the need to go and rebuild Kashi Vishwanath. The Marathas feel the need to go and re rebuild temples across the place. Guru Gobind Singh is telling his first five disciples, go to Kashi and learn the Vedas. People are constantly moving up and down this country in the name of Chardham Yatra. That has connected us for millennia. What divides here? The divide is significantly to be attributed to the man who comes here saying, you know what, I will show you heaven and I will take you to that place. You just need to change one thing about yourself. Your identity, that's it and the job is done. Surprisingly, we are struggling to blame the blatant manifest evident culprit. Because the filter called secularism prevents you from articulating that point. The Sarvadharma Sambha Vada Pav Pav Bhaji goes on. When you don't want to talk about it. Why don't we see a very clear question that I think even Sri Konrad else has put, which is show me rebellions in the nature of in the nature of let's say uh, the rebellions in the, in in Europe and other places where there is a varna based or caste based rebellion against the brahmins and the kshatriyas and the vaishyas in that period prior to the entry of the british man here when has that happened you've never been able to show anything you can't seem to explain the continuity of motives and symbols between the so-called Indus Valley civilization and the Aryan civilization. You're not able to actually explain both because you don't wish to accept that they were part of, a, of, a, of an organic whole. That there is a continuity in terms of stages. I was told by Mr. Salman Khurshi that the Times Now Summit on public debate that you should treat the entry of the invaders from the 12th century, not as invasions, but as migration apparently. <laughs> but when it comes to Aryans, the word that is used is invasion. So why is this burden on me to accept the subsequent two waves of actual invasion and colonization as migration, but to treat something else which doesn't even have a basis as invasion? How is the subsequent fellow more important to me when the first fellow is responsible for the creation of the Bharati identity and the Dharmic identity? Your question ties into the first question that was asked. Here's what I would suggest. 
I had the pleasure of sharing space with Sri Ashwin Sanghi, this well-known fiction writer, but his understanding of history is brilliant. Read his latest book, The Magicians of Mazda. I think that's one of the finest coups which, is, which somebody has pulled off in explaining the history of Muslim invasion in this country without talking of Muslim invasion of Bharat, but by speaking of Muslim invasion of Persia. He's like, if I talk about my story, you're going to say it's propaganda, you're going to call it Sanghi literature and whatnot. Okay, let's shift the focus to some other country and see what happened there. Let's see if your mind has the basic common sense to draw parallels between what happened there and what happened here. Because I am not going to be allowed to speak my, th my truth. Let me use somebody else's experience to speak about me vicariously. Brilliant writing, read it. Absolutely engrossing. The way he captures the relationship between the Iranian civilization and the Vedic civilization and the common roots between that. And at the end of it, he has given brilliant references also. Unlike most people, I go through the references just to see what is the strength and the pedigree of the research here. It is brilliant.